Hello. So you want to record a, uh, or even just host a podcast on a Skype call where the people on the Skype call will hear both you and any audio files that you play. Um, and then once you do that, of course, you can record the end result of that if you like. But the first thing is getting Skype to take both your microphone's audio and audio from an application of your choosing or applications of your choosing and send them to all the recipient or the uh all the other members of your call so if we go into skype and we go into skype's preferences and we go to audio and video you can see me because the camera turns on so there i am but it's over there because i put it over there hi anyway uh Right now, you set Skype to use a single input device as the microphone, right? And that's where things get interesting uh, because Skype needs to know what you want it to send to the other people. And it only lets you pick one thing. So we have to get tricky. We have to funnel multiple things into one. So the way we do that is we come over here and we use our friend Audio Hijack Pro. Audio Hijack Pro lets us route things pretty much any way we want. So the first thing we do is we go up to Audio Hijack Pro session menu or simply hit Command N and uh, create a new session. So let's say, for example, that we want to send not only our microphone, but our quick a thing, an audio file that we play in QuickTime. Now, you may not choose QuickTime, you may choose something else, but QuickTime's fine as an example. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is choose the microphone, right? So we go to uh, audio device here on the input tab. By default, it is default system input. And we're gonna choose the blue Nessie USB mic because that's the... Uh, Actually, that's the mic I'm recording with for you right now. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the built-in internal microphone. But you're going to choose whatever microphone you would want to use for your Skype call. Uh, as for the output device, again, remembering that Skype needs something, uh, a single device. We need something to funnel this into. And a virtual audio device is the way to do that. I have previously installed something called Soundflower. And if you don't have that on your Mac yet, you need to go install it. I'll give you the link, uh, but uh, you, it will cause a reboot because this is a virtual audio device and the installer hasn't been updated for Mavericks to know that you can actually do this stuff without needing to reboot, but it's fine. It's good to reboot your Mac every now and again. So go get Soundflower and, uh, and then install it. Uh, and if you're on Mavericks, you're going to need to do the option key trick, or sorry, the control key click trick where you control click on the installer other, and choose open. Otherwise, Mavericks Gatekeeper won't let you install it. But trust me, this works. I've been doing Mac Geekab on Mavericks, actually on Mavericks only for a couple of months, but it, it works just fine. So uh, we're going to take the built-in microphone, the internal microphone, and route it to the output device of Soundflower two-channel. Soundflower has two devices that it puts. One is a two-channel device, the other is a 64-channel device. You can use them both as two-channel devices, and we may, depending on how advanced we get here. So we say uh, Soundflower from the internal microphone, and that's that. Now, anything, uh, once I hijack this, and this is the way Audio Hijack Pro works, I'm going to choose Hijack here, and uh, in theory, yeah, you can see me talking into the microphone because the levels show up up here. And uh, we could see that it's sending output levels and it's really hot. So I'd probably want to go in to the sound preference pane and pull down the level of my microphone. Or I can bring down the level here in Audio Hijack Pro because it's really cool about that. So you can do it wherever you want. Um, but now I have my microphone going to uh, Soundflower 2. Great. Now let's create a new session. And this time we're going to make it an application session. And we're going to go ahead and choose QuickTime. And of course, that's going to be far lower than you get to see on my screen. But trust me when I say that QuickTime is here somewhere. Uh... 
I just had it selected. All right, fine. So we'll do it this way. We'll go to Applications, and we will choose QuickTime Player. Fine. Now we have chosen QuickTime Player. You'll notice, however, though, that there is that, that handy little output device thing that we saw for audio sources. It does not exist here with QuickTime Player. That's okay. Audio Hijack Pro has another way of doing this. And the other way is to go into Effects and insert an effect. And it is going to be the 4FX effect. And I'm just getting this by clicking in any one of these squares. And I'm going to choose Auxiliary Device Output. And we choose Auxiliary Device Output. And now I'm going to send it to Soundflower 2 Channel. There we go. Now we have QuickTime going to Soundflower 2 Channel. Great. Depending on your setup, you might need to wind up muting this, but either way, we're going to go ahead and hijack it. When you do that, it's going to launch QuickTime if QuickTime isn't launched. Pretty sure you're going to need to mute this. To, again, it depends on the application and the setup. You're going to need to experiment. I want to point out, you now have two things hijacked in Audio Hijack Pro. That's okay. That's how it works. Okay? Uh, it's fine. You may wind up having a zillion things hijacked in Audio Hijack Pro. But that's, that's the concept. So now we come back here to Skype. We go into Skype's preferences and we go to audio video. And instead of choosing the blue Nessie mic, which is the one I'm talking into now, we choose Soundflower 2 channel. And look, my, in, my audio is coming into this. But if I were to go into Audio Hijack Pro and unhijack this, so it's no longer taking the built-in microphone and sending it to Soundflower 2 channel, and if we go back to Skype, look, no input comes in. So we've effectively funneled Skype input or uh, audio inputs from multiple sources into a single place that Skype then will allow. That's the end of lesson number one. Enjoy. Have fun. Don't get caught.